So as you can see, this is Port Sunlight. It is a tourist attraction. People all over the world come here every year to a village that is renowned for its beautiful gardens, its museums, and the, the pleasure of looking at the architecture. But on that night, sadly, some part of Port Sunlight was damaged. Now, these are listed buildings, which means that we have to apply for planning consent. And it's only then that we can start to rebuild and repair the damage here. The slates, the windows, the doors, beautiful houses, but sadly damaged in that blast. We've got the shops a bit further up. The good news is that some of the local businesses have now moved back into their shops on the other side. But there are still businesses who are out. They're looking for premises, all because of the explosion. I wonder what went through the minds of those children from the dance studio on that night. They'd left, and it was, wasn't long uh, ago afterwards that this explosion happened. They come here, and you can see along here they've left memories of, of the dance school. These are children who have been going to these classes for a long time. And it's sad. It's sad to see this happen. Now, thankfully, the children and the dancers, uh, dance teachers, have got a temporary place to, to rehearse and to learn all about their craft, whether that's singing, dancing, or acting. But isn't it sad that uh, how, how, you know, how something like this can just destroy many lives? Um, T-shirts. We've got shoes here. It's just a sad reminder of that night. Let me tell you something. When the government send ministers here to look around, you would think that this, this would have an impact upon their lives. This would touch their hearts so that they would go away and say yes to supporting New Ferry. The answer, no, they didn't. They came here, they looked and they said no. Why? I mean, I often speak to lots of people who visit here just just to see the damage and they walk away and they are affected emotionally so why government why did you say no are they continuing to say no is it complete there hasn't been any change on this no absolutely not so what we're going to do we well, hopefully when they come back uh, after having their break we're going to get another petition together which is a parliamentary petition, which needs about 100,000 uh, signatures, then that will mean that we can take that to the Houses of Parliament where it will be debated again. We shouldn't have to do that, but we're thankful for people like yourself, Michael, and the local press and the media who come down here quite a lot just to remind people that New Ferry won't be forgotten. There was a time um, after the blast when this whole road was completely covered in bricks, in glass, we couldn't get through here, and the council have done a great job to open this road again. And you're probably wondering why, why cars go very slowly, not just because it's a bend, because they want to see this for themselves and what it's done to our lives. They see it all the time. It's just, it's just that the, um, what's interesting is that it doesn't look much different here. It's, um, it's not been... I mean, these houses will probably have to be demolished. It's such extensive damage. Absolutely they said right. that they would. Absolutely. Um, but they, things aren't. Many things aren't looking much different at all from just after the blast. No, and that's all because it takes a lot um, to, to get this um, cleaned up. It takes a lot, such yeah. as planning consent. Then there's the planning of regeneration. There's the funding. There's the waiting for the demolition of what's behind. So it takes time. Of course, people are stressful. People are still displaced, uh, including myself. So, yes, it's going to take a long time before we rise from the ashes and people are back in their homes. Um, again, it's just devastating to see the amount of damage the blast did. I mean, we are now moving away from Port Sunlight into New Ferry. And you can see the extent. It's not just here. 
it Especially went right up here into the precinct of New Ferry. You can see a board on the window of the first of this of this section here. You can see you. you um, the pub is heavily damaged, and the, the blast was held by during when a live band was playing. Absolutely. So, so we're just here now, and the work is still going on. Yeah, right a, now. a lot of these shops were damaged in the blast. So some of these local businesses have moved onto the other side. Some will stay, and they're working very diligently. So we can hear the noise. We have got the um, Cleveland Arms here, which is yeah. run by Anne, uh, who was a victim of the blast. And work is going on in here right now. It's going on right now to restore it now. The charity shop is... Yeah, we've got the Dutch closed. Uh, Baxter's Meats were originally on this side. And they've now moved over. There's boards there as well. Yeah, absolutely. So it shows, and this is quite far away now. Yeah, we're, we're moving distant. up now. Yeah, it really because um, it's, it's. But the other thing as well is that the blast and the extent of the blast came all the way down here as well. This is something. And this road has the where the community um, there was a community fundraising day on a Sunday. Yes. It was on these buildings up here. Absolutely. Um, so, so some of these. Uh, this is Grove School coming up, and these are um, Grove Square, so some of these houses were also damaged, uh, and people having a, t a, t a sort of terrible time at the moment. So yes, you are right, there was a festival here, uh, really to raise the spirits of New Ferry, and uh, it, it, was a, it was two days where people came together and had some fun. We had the deputy mayor, uh, I had the privilege of showing him around, and I think it needs to happen, things like that, so that people know that although we're stressed, although we're anxious, we won't give up the fight. So in there, wasn't it? But it was here and it was also over there. Absolutely, yes. So in this park... So you're saying that the effects were coming this far away, even where we are now. It's yeah, just absolutely. I think if we turn the camera around, that's uh, that's Grove School. I see that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the blast happened. Some of the roofs at the back uh, were shattered. If we go down here, actually, we can see we we couldn't get in from down here because it's blocked up. No, but that's I mean that's distant. Yeah. And also the impact, the sound of the blast could be heard at quite some distance away. I've met people who were in different parts of Wirral who said they heard the bang. It was felt in Neston. Oh, it was heard in Birkenhead. It was, I think it was heard in North Wales where it just, um, you've got a direct sound wave, haven't you? You've got a direct, um, so. So as you can see, it's cordoned off here. But all the roofs, you can see most of the roofs here and just beyond, were also damaged in the blast. Uh, and there are people that lived on top of those shops and they were involved in the blast. What's, what's good is that on the night of the blast, people came to help. There were people running into the rubble, dragging people out. Sadly, so many people were injured, some seriously injured. But let's not forget the community spirit. The people, like the off-duty paramedics and the other people that ran around to help the community church, Live Church, St. Mark's Church, everyone came together on that night to help and support the victims of the blast. We're very grateful, very grateful. So, where do we go from here? Well, we have to go back to the government and show them that we will not be forgotten, that we need immediate help, not just for regeneration, but for the lives of those victims who were involved in the new ferry blast. We need help now, not later, now. Now, without guessing it, what are people doing instead? You know, if you've got a, if you've got a shop that's out of action, you know, I know some have been able to move, as you were saying, um, you know, with what, what are people having to do though? If, if... Well, we've got new beginnings at the moment and Paula from Money Matters and they are doing their best and the town team to raise as much money as they can to help not just the local businesses, but the residents. It's not just about the families being displaced. It's about how to survive, how to survive after the blast. People still need to 
pay bills, people need to eat, people need to be clothed. There is so much that we need. And so I'm grateful for New Beginnings and for Paula from Money Matters and for the town team and for all the donations. We shouldn't have to do that. This is why we're saying, please, government, stand uh, with us and step in and help and support us. It's an ongoing thing and we'll have to wait to see.